disbursed a total sum of 10 million naira as grants to eight youths who are winners of the Amplified Business Clinic Entrepreneur Pitch Competition in the state. He presented the checks at the Grand March Past and Parade to mark this year's International Youth Day. Senior correspondent Adidoja Salam Adini reports. The Campus Mini Stadium on Lagos Island is the venue for this year's International Youth Day in Lagos. This parade by uniformed voluntary organizations marked the end of the week-long event. Presenting grants of 10 million era to eight winners of the Amplified Business Clinic Entrepreneur Pitch Competition, an initiative of the Ministry of Youth and Social Development, Governor Babajide Sonwulu urged the youths to be agents of positive change. He wants them to key into the available opportunities in his government to reduce unemployment and poverty to the barest minimum. We have continued to invest in educational infrastructure, including digital learning platforms that equip our students with skills needed for the future. Initiatives like the Lagos State Employability Support Program have been instrumental in training thousands of youth in various digital skills, which thereby increasing their employability and entrepreneurial capacity and capability. In line with this theme's yes theme, from clicks to progress, youth digital pathways for sustainable development. The Lagos State is committed to creating an enabling environment where our youth can leverage digital opportunities for innovation and growth. I encourage all the youth here today, all the youth watching, all the youth in Lagos State to seize these opportunities, remain focused on their ambitions and to continue to be the positive change agents that our society needs. The entrepreneurial competition aims to promote leadership skills among youths. The investment seeks to enhance youth empowerment and development in Lagos. Adidoja, Salam Adini, TVC News, Lagos. Let's now turn attention to Cross River State, where the Commissioner for Health, Egbe Ayog, has announced a new case of MPOX in Obodo, local government area, increasing the state's total case burden to five. The person is female from Okoshe village, and state authorities are investigating her travel history, including a recent trip to Ibon State. To mitigate further spread, the State Ministry of Health has activated the Incident Management System, promising thorough contact tracing and public education on preventive measures. Cross River State has a history of monkeypox cases, with four cases reported in February and March. A sample was taken and sent um, to the National Reference Laboratory. And the result came out on Saturday positive for MPOX. Uh, so that is the first case we're having in this current uh, outbreak no, no period in Cross River State. Children are the target uh, in this current uh, episode, uh, where 70% of cases are children under 10. So um, um, crowded, um, I mean, schools, environment uh, are very important areas to, uh, to, to implement um, prevention measures. This current outbreak of MPOX, we received the result on Saturday, this last Saturday, 24th of August. So that is why the EUC, Emergency Operation Center for Response, have been activated by the Honorable Commissioner for Health. Let's talk about monkeypox, especially in Nigeria. An epidemiologist, Dr. Inyang Ekweyong, joins me from Calabar, the Cross River State Capital. Good to have you join us, Dr. Akweyong. What really should we know about monkeypox? How is it transmitted and what are the symptoms? What do you should know about monkeypox? Yes, please, Dr. Akweyong. Okay, so monkeypox, as we know, is a viral genetic disease. Genetic means it is. We are getting it from animal to man. So it is caused by monkeypox virus. And uh, they have there are two types of the virus. 
flood one and uh, flood two. So what is really affecting us in Africa and Nigeria mostly is the flood one type of uh, the virus. And then uh, it's affected, uh, it's transmitted to human through by animals and then it can come to human from human through close contact. And it can affect human also by close contact with contaminated materials like uh, clothing, sharing of the sheet, towels, and post-sexual intercourse. All right. And uh, what are the symptoms? How does someone know they have monkeypox? Okay, monkeypox, that is what it's called now. Monkeypox has an incubation period of about 5 to 21 days. It can occur before that time, depending on the immunity of the person infected. So first, the person will have fever. There will be swollen limb nodes. The limb node will be swollen, indicating there's an infection, ongoing infection in the body. And then there will be chills, like cold. The person will feel cold sometimes. We'll have muzzle pains. We'll have back pains. And this will follow by a characteristic rash. Why we say characteristic means the rash became from the face and then it spread to other parts of the body, mostly the palm and sole of the hand and the feet. And then the, the, the rash is, is like blisters filled with pores inside. That's characteristic of monkeypox. Mm -hmm. Blister that have pores inside it. And then with time, maybe one to two weeks, these uh, blisters will dry up and then start off. So, so that is how you suspect that this person has mpox. All right. But what steps can people take to prevent themselves from, you know, getting mpox? Okay. The first step is awareness. Get yourself informed. You listen to what is going on around you. We have teams that are carrying out sensitization and awareness, awareness creation in all our communities, in all our LGS. So health education is key. We, the Ministry of Health, using its um, health education unit and the surveillance team are carrying out this awareness creation, telling people what to see to suspect that this, uh, this person has Mpox infection. And then another means of preventing it is by personal hygiene. If you must manage MPOX case or suspected case in a health facility, you have to use what we call infection prevention equipment, IPC, to, to protect yourself also and to prevent you carrying the infection to another patient. And then we need to wash our hands regularly and frequently using soap under running water. We have to avoid touching, close contact, touching people with suspect of infection, shaking of hands, coughing. When you are close to an infected person that is coughing or sneezing, you can pick it through respiratory droplets. So we have to avoid close contact that can give us this infection that is touching, kissing, or sexual intercourse. Because mostly people that, uh, that have multiple sex partners or homosexual are at risk of getting this infection. So that is close contact. And then another means of prevention is seeking medical attention. If you have symptoms that align with what we have mentioned, fever, um, muzzle pain, back pain, swollen limb, and then this rash that begins from the face and then spread to other parts, you have to seek medical attention. Report immediately, can call the surveillance and epidemiology team, and we will link up with you to refer you to a hospital, take your sample, and then test to know what actually is the problem. Then another one, another way to prevent it is vaccination. All right. So, and yes, vaccination. Yes. And for vaccine... Though we don't have the vaccine in Nigeria yet, we are expecting it soon. Yes, Dr. Ekwe Young. And, you know, I think the federal government just released a, uh, re received rather a generous donation of about 10,000 doses from the U.S. Okay. government. 
Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us about uh, this and uh, for about effort also in Cross River State to manage the situation. Dr. Inyang Ekoyong is a state epidemiologist. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Now, let's return to our earlier story about the police declaring war on Shiite over their action, which led to the deaths of two police officers. Our correspondent, Sifon Nesien, has been monitoring that development. He joins us now. Sifon, a moment ago, the FCT Commission of Police declared war against those behind the clash that took the lives of two police officers uh, over the weekend. You were there at the briefing. What more can you tell us? Uh, what, what the CP has said was he emphasized the fact that the deaths of two of his men would not be in vain. And he also, you know, displayed a register, um, which he said is among items recovered from the suspects. Talking about the members of the Islamic Movement of Nigeria in custody of the police, 94 of them. Initially, 97 were arrested, but what we saw here are 94. And the um, police CP said it's because um, three of them have been screened and allowed to go. So that means the 94 that are in custody have a case to answer. But the interesting part is that he also said that they have the register, a list of names of those who were involved in that procession that turned violent. He says with that, his job becomes um, a lot easy, you know, tracking them and ensuring they are brought to book. All right, Sifon, thank you very much for that update. Our correspondent, Sifon, is in for us in Abuja.